Okay, so let's start drawing this uh, <clears throat> bit of pouring, if we can. I can't seem to get it to move on my screen. I don't want to smash with that. Okay. So we'll go for it through the, um, the old fashioned way. So we're gonna get a bit of white on here first. Normally I'm far more organised with my pencils, and today, for some reason, I'm not at all. Not even slightly. So, we've got a few tufts of hair here. And some more bits coming down here. recall me saying I didn't really want to draw the paws. Nothing's changed there. I'm just leaving this quite grubby as you can tell. really mapping this in, not trying to be really clever about it. Maybe it comes down there somewhere. Really, I'm probably going to aim to try and make this very similar to the one we just did on the other side. Mapping in bits of white, there's a few tufts. These will all be darkened out afterwards. A bit more detail put in. Okay. Again, there's whole thing in as we've already mentioned about a hundred times right. <laughs> I must remember I'm not allowed to hum Mary has messaged me to tell me my singing is awful <laughs> ironically I didn't really think I was singing but hey Very similar to how we did the rest of the drawing here. I'm not trying to create marks in particular. Just indications of where some of these darker areas are. And then we'll blend these all afterwards. In, but this will need to be blackened out. And we'll also do what we did before again, 
uh, and add some blues in. through as you can see similar to earlier on in the thing this gives it some directional flow a few messages from work so I need to respond to those while trying to draw at the same time. It should be fun.
put this black in as we did in the other areas and indeed down here as well not too much because this is going to be a bit of hair Just kind of mark making that. As I said, I'm not trying to be clever with any people drawing draw everything in graphic, graphic detail. But sometimes you don't need to. In fact, quite a lot of times you don't need to. Strangest looking foot. So now we've got a bit of foot here, we can actually start to add some more detail in to the hair. so white unfortunately but then you get that nice look of hair that nice pinky colour for the uh, toe pad which is hiding just under here that's not pink not for them oh dear the 
bit of a toe pad there, which blends off. By definition, kind of on here somewhere too. But we're not going to see them <coughs> particularly.
mention there then, which I didn't want. harder here now just to add in that extra bit of light picture no part of the picture over here um, so it might be that we trim it down but we'll see right so we have a basic pour it's not too bad not amazing but it's not bad so we'll add a few spot today I want to sort of try and finish off this bit of hair over here by the eye. So to do so, I'm going to draw in some of the darker bits again. So the old trick with the tortilla on again and just sort of pull it in. Mm-hmm. 
with it gone. A little one, that'll do. to just darken in a bit here. Just taking out a little bit too much of these um, dark spots by drawing the, the nicely coined phrase, the hairs that are barely there. <laughs> okay. <coughs> nice scraggly here. Yeah, so I think what bits can I want to change? Tell I'm a little bit full of cold today, carrying on from yesterday. Just what I wanted. here as you can probably tell just a very gentle touch of the pink so we do the sharpening a little bit Here we want to just 
that in as well. I'm just going to pull this down a little bit here. Just want to draw some highlights down this side. Just um, now, the drawing's gone on a little bit. Add some depth again back into here. Uh, I can't do that crazy without leading on here, so let's just. Smooth that in just a touch. do with a nice dark 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 brown is a dark blue instead into some of these areas. And it is a real a real touch. Okay. So there we have how I think the ear done. We want to try and smarten the background up a little bit uh, and do a little bit more work on the foreground. But I'm not going to try and create some sort of detailed background. That's not what this is about. This is a portrait. Um, it's not a location-based portrait. Uh, it is purely about the animal, uh, and I'm fairly pleased with that. Um, I just want to make sure this is a little bit less grainy. Finish off this edge over here, and this edge over here appears light, but it's lit by lit up by my light. Um, so I might add some more light over to this side, which gives us the direction roughly of the shadows coming down. So let's finish it off in the next tutorial. Okay, so here we are, we're on the last part of the drawing now. Uh, there's very little left to do, um, just the finishing touches. So let's see what we're gonna do on here. So one of the things we need to do is to finish off this foreground area down here. So back to my brown soft pastel. Just gonna map this in here. I'm probably gonna cut this off at these edges, as I said. So I'm not gonna concern myself too massively with perfecting it. Um, boo, 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 which shall I use? I want to just use my finger. I 
I don't want it to be too um, too samey there. <clears throat> so I'm going to get a bit of blue. Scroll it along. There we go. I'll have to retouch a few small parts. interesting news from work which is part of a little plan I had that everyone said wouldn't work and apparently is working so I'm quite chuffed about that save some time I won't bore you with it oh dear not quite what I'd intended <laughs> The nice thing about working on a drawing is that you are working on a drawing. And you'll continue working. I'm just blending it all. You can see the names of greasy fingers. Look at this. There's a few fingerprints on there, I suspect. They could just be other things. So I can't do that with my finger. So this is where we need to bring the, uh, the old turtle on in. Blend in these edges. A bit better. And it's better to have quite such a, an impact than this green and blue onto it, to be honest. sharp anymore. No, nope, that's not going to work. So let's go for some soft pastel black. finish this off again and have the finishing touches which will be all those little fine hairs that I've just erased. It will now anyway. Okay. Back with the tall tail on. I'm just going to do this very gently so I can try and blend it as best as I can. And then some more shadow. Giving this sort of ground area a slightly more patchy look. Edges here because remember that fur gives off its own almost a blur.
here we've got this sort of I keep referring to it as an oldie worldy look to it. <clears throat> in the older pictures they used to um do all sorts of strange things to create these foregrounds. Uh, I used to be quite fascinated by them. Almost the same colour as the dog here. I'm just adding this back in because I just feel it's a little dark. I wanted to give it a bit more of an impression of the ground. There we go, and hopefully this is not going to go too drastic. It's in quite greenish coloured. So I'm just holding it on these little edges where it's not such a drama because they're not going to be there when I cut it all to bits. A little annoyed about these fingerprints. You think I would know better? Oh, fortunately this will be for my own collection. Maybe I'll sell it. Who knows? Oh, I'm just going to clean my hands off a little bit. I'm going to see if I can't disguise these um, fingerprints a little bit, just adding some texture. Do, do, do. Yeah, evil fingerprints. Really disguise them, makes them look a bit more like they're supposed to be there. Right, so there we are, foreground's finished. We're going to do the same thing to the background now. Uh, I'm not going to try and do anything spectacular. This area looks too pale, it's not meant to. This area is meant to be brighter, uh, and obviously down here we're not quite finished off. So let's uh, work on that. So the obvious colour is this dark black over here. And be careful applying this because what we don't want is a too much of the colour spreading onto our drawing. And we don't want those horrible lines you saw me do earlier on, a bit like that one there, because that will potentially make a, a mess of it. And I tend to blend this with my finger to start with. Probably gonna get fingerprints everywhere again. I haven't just cleaned my hands. And this isn't too bad to use a black over here because we're on top of all the colours. I'm going to be very acutely aware now of not making this blend badly. You do see a lot of, of artist work uh, but they've done this afterwards uh, and they've done it quite badly. I haven't done it perfectly here. You can see a slight glow around the edges. I'm sure it's more more obvious on the camera than it is when I'm looking at it here. So there we are. We've darkened that area there. This area is a bit lighter. Um, I may lighten it up in a minute, but first of all, I've got to get this area here done. Uh, so I'm going to add a little bit of black. And over here. Not too much, I'm going to say, because I want to brighten this up in shortly. Uh, moving in a circular motion. Just to try and help spread it a little bit better onto the, the foreground here. Background even. Quite a bit of pressure, really filling up the green. Same thing up here shortly. I'm just trying to really get rid of any obvious bits of paper 
bits that are going to look like this. Oh gosh. And watch those fingerprints. I should really be holding my piece of paper on this. <clears throat> Here's me. I'm doing a tutorial. I'm not showing you how to do it properly. There we go. as you can see because I'm just trying to get this mapped in there quite nicely uh, and I'm going to hmm, add some blue I think this could be disastrous so I'm going to try this light blue and I'm just going to pop it from this corner I just want to give it a very light sheen here we'll spread it across a bit let's see what happens when we do this Yeah. So I've just lightened it up a bit to give it a bit of a more interesting background. A bit greener than I intended, I have to admit. After putting all that blue on. So, well, I like that look. I do like that look indeed. Uh, I am going to add a little royal blue to it. Bring some blue back into the scene. Do a bit more blending here, and the problem that that's going to be there. We go, don't need an awful lot. afterwards when you thought you'd finished it <coughs> uh, and you'll wish you had not touched it at all but you know, I'll to get a bit of that look off my fingers onto there then singing. Right, okay. I'm happy with that. You've got that nice sort of glowing effect as you can tell. Up in that one corner. Worked quite well. Also, my camera seems to be not as zoomed out as I would like it to have been, but not to worry. So that's the base drawing done. We'll have a few finishing touches to add to it and then at long last, we are finished. It'll be interesting, I've never timed myself before, so I'll be adding all the videos up and seeing how long this has taken me. So. Okay, finishing touches. So, there's a few bits missing, as you can tell. Those bits are a few whiskers, and 
an odd few loose little bits of hair that we just want to draw on because this is a dog. And then we might just retouch those highlights on the eyes if I can put my paper on. So let's go, let's have a look. She has, I call her a girl, I have no idea why. Couple of whiskers there. There's one sort of, you can't really see where they're coming from on the face. Like that. And in fact, there's a couple more. Got that one there, one there. There's another one here. Uh, I don't see the Halloween being one there. We have the one up there. Then we have one big one going right across here. This is the four knots coming from about here. It's always bad when the darn thing doesn't show up. So we'll come back to that in a second. I'll show you what to do. I'm going for one about here, I think. Which goes like that. There's a few tufty bits here. I never see any harm in adding in the odd extra whisker for art's sake. Right. <laughs> well, some of these get a bit challenging because they've got to be a bit longer. Like that. And then we're going to have one here. It's going to come up and round and up and round. So they're going to be hard. I'm going to just have a quick think for a second how I'm going to draw that in. So while I do like that, I'm going to try and highlight this one hair that you've just seen me draw, and I'll need a sharper pencil for that, so bear with me while I just work some magic on this pencil. He says, hoping for the best. Hmm. It's a Faber Castle, no, this is a Stabilo pencil sharpener, uh, which is about as much use as a tissue when it comes to sharpening pencils. I'll just turn that straight for a second. You can have a look at that while I try and sharpen this. Uh, I need my little bowl and my Carbothello pencil shaver. Much I would much rather use my mechanical pencil sharpener. I think we all know what happened to that. Died of death. It actually exploded yesterday. I'm not sure if I was on camera when that happened or not. I'm just trying to get this to a nice sharp point now. Otherwise we're going to do a big thick line. And these are whiskers. So I've got a bit of a nib, but it's no good. Uh, sandpaper would be better than this old pastel paper. <coughs> That's certainly quicker. So I've got a fairly sharp point on that now. And I'm just going to do it very carefully. I saw someone the other day who had um, used a gel pen on a drawing and on some pastel work as well. I thought that was interesting. Never tried that. One thing I'm not is a purist. I think if you can make an art look like it, you want it to look, then use whatever technique you need to make that happen. adding a little touches I 
You just have to be careful when doing this. want to it's a bit harder when you've got it over lots of pasta like this because <clears throat> it can look wrong so here we go one coming out about here and we've got another one coming out about here Now you can see, I've tightly done that on purpose there. We've got a couple of mistakes. So here we've got a double line, and here. So how do we correct that? So right. fortunately, the pastel's very forgiving. So we just trim the edges, like this. As long as you're careful, you can refine it back quite a lot. As you can see. Should we do there? I'm almost tempted to leave that, you know, that whole piece there. And here again. There we go. Oh, sniffling. Well, that didn't work, did it? That's the point of my pencil. This is why it's important to make sure your pencil is genuinely sharp because otherwise you, your point isn't where you think it is. <clears throat> and then with a big thick line in the wrong place. On this farewell at all, really. Okay. A gel pen might be an interesting one to try. Get a nice sharp white line there with that, I suspect. be successful in trying to erase this from here that would be quite nice there but there we go I think in reality that should have gone perhaps down a bit more here so but maybe we do another one Get everything perfect. I'm sure the people that are, but it doesn't always work. And I wouldn't let it bother you because every piece is different and we all work in slightly different ways. And sometimes it's just nice to be able to create. I 
I said I wanted to bring in the white back into the eyes. So this is my Karen Dash White, which I often use for going over. And all I want to do is add in a little bit more white there. bits I want to add in. No, nope, I think I'm happy enough with that. So, by no means perfect because I'm not a perfect artist, uh, but it's a nice drawing and I'm sure it will go down well with people. So it just remains for me to sign it. I don't have a fancy signature I'm afraid. Uh, where shall I sign it? I think in this further left paw here. Well done, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, go away, follow the, um, the link to the artwork uh, and have a go, have a play yourself. Uh, and if you have any tips for me, I'm always grateful. Uh, and likewise, if you have any questions or anything you'd like to ask me, please feel free to comment below and I'll do my best to help you.